Alrighty folks, the 10 gallon water heater has arrived by Thermate and very well packaged styrofoam on the bottom, on the top, all around it. We got our user manual right here. Let's bring it out and start to install it. It does come with an NCL X5 three quarter inch reseating pressure temperature relief valve. Okay, let's take a closer look at the device here. Now, as we do get started with this video, top link in the description box below will be this exact same 10 gallon water heater where you guys can read more about it and pick it up yourself. All right, so obviously I'm gonna be temporarily installing it in this edition, which is still under a model, but my final space that I want to install this in is gonna be in my shop because I want hot water for when my hands get dirty working on my cars, I have a lift in my shop, etc. That's where it's eventually gonna go. I just don't have a sink or water coming into the shop, so I'll be doing it in this remodeled portion of a secondary kitchen in this room that we're currently in right now. All right, so looking over here on the side here, hot water outlet right here. We have cold water inlet right here. And then that is it for the tank. Instructions, of course, Thermomate right here. Make sure you read over your instruction manual and let's get started. Now underneath this cover here, you're gonna find your controls here for water temperature. Right now it looks like it's set to about 120 or so, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And you have your reset button right here as well. And then on the top underneath the cover plate right here, you're gonna find your connections, which you're gonna to have to either hardwire in or wire a plug, which I will do. And what's nice about this unit, it is 120 volts. As we can see right here from the specs right here, power again is 120 volts. Watts, you're looking at 1500, 10 gallon, amps is 12.5 and it weighs 41 pounds. The water pressure, maximum 150, and you can go from 90 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Now your temperature relief valve right here goes on the top of the unit, right on top right here, threads in. I would actually recommend, it looks like it has very little amount of plumber's tape on it. I would actually recommend doing some number five pipe dope sealant, which is yellow, around that as well, which I will be doing. And then you place that, of course, right here, thread that in, and then have that drain tube go down into a drain, etc. And then right here is just again threaded right here as well right here. So we need to bring in some PEX with some connections. And then if you do need to flush the device, you have your flushing capabilities right here. And this one up top right here is the A node rod right here as we can see. And here's kind of a uh, layout of the chart right here as you can see. Okay, the tank is filling up right now and you can actually hear it. And then it will start to obviously raise up. Now, again, this is only 10 gallons, so it's not gonna take too long for that to fill. Open up your valve slowly, and we're gonna go ahead and walk you through the installation process here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk you through and show you how I installed mine. Now, again, I was gonna do it in the kitchen, but I thought this is probably what I'm gonna have. And this is in the unremodeled area of my home, so it is under construction, so do forgive a little bit dirty, but let's get into it. So this is kind of the type of sink I will be having in my shop to wash my hands. So let's go ahead and take a look down below. Now, obviously yours is gonna be slightly different, but let's go ahead and talk you through this here. So this is my cold water valve right here. I have that to the on position. Now with this water heater, especially in my shop, or if you're doing a large van build, camper build, etc., then your hot water line, so the white represents blue, which is cold. The red is gonna be your hot water line. There wouldn't be a hot water line coming in, but since I already had one. I'm using it for the demonstration purposes of this video, but it is in the off position, meaning I'm not getting any water from that. It is again closed right here. So it comes out of the hot water heater into this line and then goes up to my fixtures. So what you would do is you wouldn't even have this line right here and you would take this run and go straight to your fixtures and branch off with PEX and the proper faucet shower connections. But this is just kind of giving you an overview of what we're looking at here. So again, my water line, my cold water line is on. It's on the on position. I've teed off of that with PEX 
And this is what I'm gonna have again for my shop. I'm gonna have a larger enclosure. So the hot water heater can either be sitting next to it right on the outside and I'll just drill through my cabinetry if I get a cabinet or build a custom one that's a little bit taller than this so I can fit it underneath the sink in my shop. Okay, so with that explanation here, let's go ahead and show you here. So hot water outlet. So the hot water comes out of the tank, goes into my line right here and goes up to my sink. The cold water inlet right here goes from the bottom of my sink, tees off right here, goes in here, and then when I turn my hot water on, I only get it from the tank here. These are nicely sealed shut from the factory right here. Here's your drain plug. This is your heating rod here again, like we saw in the diagram. I do have a drain pan below it just for the purposes of showing you this video. And then this, of course, would plug into like your drain pan here. And then you would want to have like a drain right here or have this connected to like some PEX draining out of your house. Okay, now let's look at the connections right here. These connections, if you're gonna be using half inch PEX, is gonna be half inch to three quarter MNPT. This is regular PEX. So it's threaded back here with three quarter inch. I put plumber's tape right there for no leaks. And then this is half inch right here, clamped on half inch. And that's a male to female. This is exactly the precise one I got for all of the connections. I had to get three of these, one for down here. Same method applies, plumber's tape, crimping a half inch on, and then the pressure relief valve right here. I put more plumber's tape on, tighten that up right there. Same thing, quarter inch to half inch. And then I used PEX coming down here with a 90 degree bend coming down. And this would be for some runoff, pressure relief, water, etc., just in case into your drain pan and then it would drain out right over there in that area there. Now, looking at the connections here, I do need to put that all together, but again, this is temporary because this is for the shop once again. So you would either have conduit or you can have it like this. If you are gonna have it like this, I would wrap these in electrical tape as well so those nut caps don't come off. Tuck those nut caps in and then seal it shut on top with your little brackets here. Again, those would all fold up inside there. And let's go ahead and look at that. I used a power plug, stripped down. I am gonna be careful because this is live, so do be careful, please. Take precautions. When you are wiring this, obviously make sure the plug is not plugged in. And we have brown to black in my case, but yours would be black to black. And then because my plug's a little different, I have blue to white, but again, white to white, and then ground is the same. The reason why these colors are a little different is because this came from a TV plug from an international company. So sometimes international companies use different color coded wires instead of black and white. But blue is going to be your neutral, brown is going to be your hot or live, I should say. So that's how that's wired up. That's just going into a 120 outlet. That's why I chose this hot water heater because I didn't want to do anything with 22240. Again, pressure relief is right here looking absolutely fantastic. Now it does take a little bit of time to heat up because the anode rod has to warm that water up and I'm on well water. So it was a little chilly coming out of the ground obviously because it is well water once again. Now, when I first turn on my hot water, now this sink, obviously this is part of the unremodeled. So even with hot or cold, I just don't get too much pressure coming out of this faucet. This whole thing needs to be replaced. But when I first turned on, turn it on slowly because you're gonna get a lot of like pressure coming out and then eventually it's gonna come. But just make sure that your tank fills up all the way before you do turn on the hot water. And again, as we heard earlier in our video, it's going in, it'll raise the top, it'll refill itself obviously with that water inlet to outlet. I do forget how fast that a hot water heater, especially with the short line, so it's already nice and warm and feeling really good there. Like that shower temperature right there, very, very quickly. I'm not used to that. I have a tankless water heater for the whole home and it takes quite a while for the water to get hot. So again, it's been about 15 minutes or so and that's actually hotter than it was about 15 minutes ago. Let's go ahead and see what we got here on our radar gun. That's 98.2, so it is warming up, 99, 99. And so it just needs a little bit more time to warm up. 
and then it should get up to the one, about 120 I have it set at. So we're gonna be back with you when it hits 120. We're gonna give it a little bit more time like I already mentioned. Now also check everything for leaks. Make sure you're not dripping down here. And again, what I would personally do myself is obviously plumber's tape is working, but when I do put this in my shop, I'll probably do just number five yellow pipe dope or plumber's tape and number five pipe dope for extra security. Double check everything, make sure nothing's leaking. Make sure all your PEX connections and your turn off valves, cut off valves are not leaking. Look below, make sure there's no drips, etc. Everything is looking good. We'll be back with you with 120 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, back with you now here. So make a long story short, what I actually had to do, I pulled off the, uh, the cover here after testing the water a couple times and it was getting up to about 9,900 degrees, but I wanted of course hotter than that. So I pulled off the cover and obviously unplugged the power before you do do that. And then like I showed you earlier in the video, the thermostat, I actually hit reset and then turned it up a little bit, which actually now I think I might need to lower it just a little bit as well. But I turned it up to like maybe about 135 or so. And now I'm getting about, especially with this, this might not be 100% accurate. It's just, it is what it is, but I got like 127, 128. And so if you're not getting as hot of water being on 125 or 120 on the thermostat, raise it up a little bit, plug it back in, give it time to heat up. And let's go ahead and show that to you now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the water here and we'll go ahead and shoot that. We should be able to get a reading here. 74, 75, 77, 78. So you'll see how fast this goes up. I'm just gonna shoot the bottom water here. 95, look how fast that is. 103, 104, 105, seven. So as you can see here, let's see, it should go higher than that. Let me see if we have to get, no, it's not. And there we go. I'm trying to get that laser right in there. 110, 114, right here, 115, 16, 15, 16, 18, 117. I think you guys get the idea. I think it got up to like 125 last night. It was just a little hard using this little laser. And then 122, so you guys get the idea there how fast that was. So once again, if you are having not as hot water, mess around with that thermostat, read the directions, unplug it, do it, put the cover back on, plug it back in, and you'll be good to go. Overall, a nice small size 10 gallon, thumbs up in my book, nice and hot water, and this will be perfect for my shop if I have greasy hands, again, cleaning my hands out in my shop. It might be a little too large for van life, but that is an option. They do have smaller models as well. Again, top link in the description box below will be this exact same 10 gallon water heater and their other models. Click on that link, check out their other models, see what other people are saying. But just like all my videos, please don't go into debt for anything I am making a video about. But if you do have the cash and it does intrigue you, please go ahead and purchase on away. If you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button on the way out, helps the channel. Also subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this, as well as van life builds, DIY home projects, tech review videos, and more. My name's Chris, we'll see you on the next one.